The most commonly used PV systems are rooftop systems. They are particularly prone to damage caused by direct and indirect lightning effects due to their exposed location. Since the PV system is directly connected to the electrical installation of the building, lightning effects can have severe consequences, damage to the building resulting from direct lightning effects or fire, injury of people inside the building, destruction or damage to electronic devices caused by direct or indirect lightning effects. Comprehensive protection is therefore necessary and should be planned carefully. It is not necessary for lightning to strike the PV site to damage it. Therefore, it is worthwhile to consider all the ways in which lightning can induce surge. Direct Lightning Strike Direct lightning strike energy is enormous and a surge protector alone cannot protect the stricken instruments. External protection is required to attract the lightning and redirect it to the ground during which SPDs only absorb residual energy. External protection equipment includes lightning rods, grounding wires, catching devices, and conductors as well. One effect of a direct lightning strike is increased ground potential. When the lightning strikes a building or a lightning rod, high current flows to the ground and the ground potential rises. This creates a potential difference between ground and external conductors, leading to surge behavior. Electrostatic Induction Thunderclouds contain negative charges in their lower sections. These high negative charges can induce high positive charges within nearby cables, especially power lines and communication cables. During discharge of the lightning, the positive charge accumulated in the cable is released, resulting in a surge in the cable in both directions. Electromagnetic Induction or Indirect Lightning A discharge between clouds and the ground generates a surging magnetic wave. When the magnetic wave reaches AC lines or communication cables, it induces a voltage surge. What is a surge protection device? In order to avoid high voltage damage to a PV system, voltage surges should have a path to ground to avoid high energy from passing through electronics. In order to provide this path, all of the wiring exiting and entering the system should be coupled to ground through a surge protection device (SPD), and all conductive surfaces should be directly grounded. Examples of line exiting and entering the system include the AC mains and communication lines, such as Ethernet cables and telephone lines. Note that SPDs on power lines provide protection that is different from circuit breakers. Circuit breakers protect equipment from overcurrent, while SPDs protect equipment from overvoltage. SPD for photovoltaic applications Protection by equipotential bonding, protection by surge protection devices. Protection by Equipotential Bonding The first safeguard to put a place in medium that ensures equipotential bonding between all the conductive parts of a PV installation. The aim is to bond all grounded conductors and metal parts and so create equal potential at all points in the installed system. Protection by Surge Protection Devices SPDs are particularly important to protect sensitive electrical equipments like AC-DC inverter, monitoring devices and PV modules, but also other sensitive equipments powered by 230 volts electrical distribution network. The number and location of SPDs on the DC side depend on the length of the cables between the solar panels and inverter. The SPD should be installed in the vicinity of the inverter if the length is less than 10 meters. If it is greater than 10 meters, a second SPD is necessary and should be located in the box close to the solar panel. The first one is located in the inverter area. SPDs are categorized into three types. A type 1 SPD is used at the origin of the installation. A type 2 SPD is used at distribution boards. And a type 3 SPD is used near terminal equipment. There are some cautions while installing SPDs at DC side. When using string protectors such as fuses, DC breakers or string diodes together with SPDs, the SPD must be installed between the fuses and the inverter. Otherwise, the PV strings would be unprotected if the fuse is triggered. For inverters with an integrated fuse box, internal fuses should be bypassed in order to connect an SPD and an external string fuses should be connected. If you like this video, please share it and also subscribe my channel to stay tuned for upcoming videos. Thank you.